As Bitcoin touches on its largest Fettuccine retracement level of this entire range after diddling the 21 day moving average, have the bears back to themselves right onto the lap of the bulls. And as Eleanor Wombat sets her glaucoma filled eyes on Ethereum, the real question is how much are the big bankers paying this beautiful sack of beans? But is ADA right now repeating a bullish fractal from the end of 2020? And a staunch warning coming from Richard Daddio, will crypto be destroyed like a man's happiness after 20 years of marriage? I'm your host, Tony Tubetop, and the creatures seem to be emerging from the depths of dementia just in time to attack crypto once more. So you get the new channel, make sure to like, subscribe. Join us gives me these absolutely time sensitive alerts. And as well, we will be picking the winners for our ADA competition. Three winners of $1,000 in ADA. We will be picking that live uh, in this video. And as well, if you're interested in earning free ADA by staking with our new pool, after only uh, just five days, we already have well over a million dollars worth of ADA in the pools. Growing fast, it only takes two minutes to do. You can watch uh, the three minute video here to show you how. And without any further ado, Let's jump in. Also, after Bitcoin received its golden cross, it is actually going on a nice run, currently uh, battling right at about the 21 DMA. So we're going to be getting into that with Bitcoin and as well, some other very interesting price action for both Ethereum and Cardano as well. But I want to start off here. And that is with Supreme Mega Mummy Eleanor Wiggles here taking aim at Ethereum. Uh, high Ethereum network fees that could wipe out small investors as if she cares about small investors. So she takes aim here at high fees on the Ethereum network, which is clearly a problem. Okay. I don't think anybody likes high Ethereum fees. Okay. I like Ethereum. I like a lot of cryptos. And uh, do I like paying hundreds of dollars in gas per transaction? No, I don't really like it that much. Warren said outages on crypto exchanges last week uh, could hit people who don't have the money to lose. And this is not the first gripe, the first complaint that Elizabeth Warren uh, has had with crypto. In fact, she's going to attack it from every angle. And as time goes on, and as naturally, she will probably learn a little bit about crypto, which right now I, I guarantee she, she knows very little. A month ago, she knew literally nothing. Over time, she's eventually going to learn a little bit and her attacks are going to get more and more valid, meaning uh, the people feeding her information are going to use every single attack angle they can to talk about crypto. So uh, these attacks are just beginning. I expect this to continue and grow immensely uh, as the US in particular and the big banker boys behind, you know, funding the government are obviously not big fans of crypto and specifically DeFi. Uh, I wonder why they would be attacking Ethereum. Well, uh, pretty much the home base of DeFi. So she said to Gary Gensler, uh, advocates saying the crypto market are all about financial inclusion, but the people who are most economically vulnerable are the ones who are most likely to, uh, uh, they're basically just complaining about Ethereum fees. But realistically, if you care about people uh, being able to participate uh, in finance and be able to live, then crypto is not really uh, the first place they would attack, right? Uh, the last thing that they care about is if you have enough money uh, to live your day-to-day -day life not in poverty. They're going to say that is the reason. However, that's absolutely, obviously, 0% true. They could care less if you were eating beans and living on the street uh, for your entire life in complete poverty. But the second that a technology has the chance of taking even a tiny itsy bitsy 1% of revenue away from the big banks, then they will come out with a trillion reasons why it needs to be stopped. And they will never address the real reason, which is it will start cutting into their profits and their ability to absolutely crush you financially uh, every day for the rest of your life, like they've been doing for decades. Uh, and with that being said, Gensler raised pressure on crypto exchanges yesterday saying they need to register with the regulator because some of their tokens or products may be securities. And this comes after Gensler basically admitted that uh, they don't have a right to regulate or the SEC doesn't have a right to regulate crypto. But if some of the cryptos are securities, then they have a right to regulate it. Again, absolutely just grasping at straws in every way possible here. And uh, yeah, with that being said, these attacks are going to continue. So it's absolutely important that you understand what is going to be happening 
in the future. You know the saying, it's something like, uh, first they laugh at you and then they do something else that I can't remember, it's irrelevant anyway, and then they uh, and then they fight you and then you win. And we're on the then they fight you part, okay? Uh, they understand how revolutionary and how beneficial and how um, unique this technology is, like we've never seen anything like this before. Uh, they understand how it could actually end up helping uh, the average person, and they do not like that. So they are going to fight, okay? They didn't care when Bitcoin's market cap was a million or even a billion dollars. Now Bitcoin basically has a market cap of a trillion, the entire crypto market as a whole, right around like two trillion. So at this point, they realize, wow, this thing keeps growing. It's not just going to fade away. Let's try to destroy it. And as well, Ray Dalio, who has come out in at least uh, somewhat favorable support of Bitcoin, also says at the end of the day, if Bitcoin is successful, they'll kill it. OK, uh, keep in mind, it's decentralized. So even if the worst possible laws came out in the US to absolutely try to destroy crypto in the long term, it would benefit the rest of the world that does not outlaw it. And eventually uh, the US would you know, fall further and further behind, as it already is anyway. OK, the US is not in a great place over the last couple of decades, and that's objectively uh, the facts, okay? That's not my opinion. But basically here, at the end of the day, if it really is successful, they will kill it, and they'll try to kill it. And I think they will kill it because they have ways of killing it. Uh, I don't know why he repeated that so much, but that doesn't mean it doesn't have a place, a value, and so on. So he even said it may not have intrinsic value in his opinion, but it could be useful in a diversified portfolio. Uh, the hedge fund manager said he thinks it's worth considering all the alternatives to cash and all the alternatives to some of the other financial assets. Okay, he's no expert on it. I think diversification matters. Bitcoin has some merit, he said. So with that being said, it's just kind of furthering the point that, yeah, I mean, we should probably expect uh, further and further crackdown and uh, a regulation on crypto, because at this point, there's really not regulation on crypto. And uh, it's pretty much inevitable. Uh, I've known this for years, and many people have known this for years. It will eventually have some level of regulation. It's just, you know, it's just going to happen. Uh, in the past, he's the, the world's largest hedge fund firm uh, founder of Bridgewater Associates. He said that he's very bullish about crypto as a digital clearing mechanism, perhaps referring to DeFi. So is he potentially very bullish on DeFi? And again, that is what um, Eleanor Roosevelt here is attacking with you know Ethereum, pretty much the granddaddy of DeFi. Uh, Ethereum kind of takes the cake there. So uh, they're not necessarily as threatened by Bitcoin as they are from things uh, you know, more more beneficial, um, even in the short term, like like Ethereum and even like Cardano. And with that being said, is it possible Cardano price accumulation fractal is hinting at a massive upswing? So uh, the accumulation phase seems similar to one we saw back at the end of November 2020 to the beginning of 2021, and with a target of about a little over eight dollars if a portion, even if a portion of this pr uh, fractal plays out. So with that being said, the Alonzo upgrade was successfully implemented just three days ago. It brings smart contracts and a plethora of possibilities to it, all of which were highly anticipated. And it's uh, sometimes referred to, obviously, as the Ethereum killer. Basically, everything is referred to as the Ethereum killer. It never possessed the uh, capabilities that allowed it to play in the same field. But now, uh, you know, the starting of building of dApps, decentralized exchanges, and stable coins uh, could help uh, Cardano evolve into a DeFi ecosystem similar to ETH. And that's kind of, uh, that's why people are bullish on Cardano. If Cardano was just another Bitcoin clone, nobody would care. And it would not be at number three uh, in terms of market cap right now. But Cardano price accumulated for roughly 40 days in November to January, which followed, which was followed by a 600% bull run. Uh, it pushed ADA from 10 cents to $1.20. Uh, and assuming that ADA can replicate one fourth of the 2020 one run up, a 150% advance would forecast a roughly $6 target. A 300% upswing would push it to a uh, important Fibonacci extension level of about $8.40. And this is the fractal that is referenced here on Crypto FX Street. You can see it here, which potentially another little move up to that $3 area, which may be another move down then before continuing up. So that would indeed take some time to play out. And as well, we can actually just pick the winners for this uh, giveaway here. Uh, it looks as though there was 7,000 unique users and 141 actions uh, equating in about 650,000 entries. So yeah, if we just uh, draw the winners here, draw winners, and um, yeah, I haven't done this in a while. So winners to draw three, uh, $1,000 in ADA. Uh, okay, and we can hit draw.
Oh wow, and it looks like the winners are Pen Pen, Jordan, John Seaton, and SNDO KRS. Uh, very big from Netherlands, UK, and India. So a nice diversification there. Uh, so yeah, I will be contacting you guys. I'm going to blur out the emails here, obviously, because if those emails are public, you will absolutely get destroyed with uh, a bunch of spam, I'm sure. But as well, if you did not win the giveaway and you're interested in earning free ADA by joining our pool, uh, growing very fast here, I'm absolutely very excited about this as well. Um, so uh, yeah, if you're interested, there's a three minute tutorial, it only takes a few minutes, so you can check that out as well. But as well, with that being said, Bitcoin did have its very nice golden cross. And since this cross, it's already up about uh, seven or so percent. But what's key about this is it's above the 21 day moving average. It's above 48,000 currently. Um, and this is just looking good for Bitcoin. You can see here, this is a very important level that Bitcoin has spent a lot of time getting rejected at over the past month since August 14th as it came back up to it. So this is a very key level. Uh, we initially flipped this and then tried to hold the support, failed after this big dump here. And now we're flipping it. We're trying to flip it again. But as you can see, guys, for the most part, the bearish pressure is just not very strong. Uh, Bitcoin is just looking very bullish and the rest of the space is as well. Uh, Bitcoin is still above the 21 week moving average. Six weeks after crossing above the 21 week moving average, Bitcoin still remains above the 21 week moving average. Okay. Keep in mind back here during this dumpy time, all the bears were telling you if we came back up to the 21 week moving average, we would get swiftly rejected all the way down to $5 per Bitcoin or something equally as psychotic. But with that being said, Bitcoin's still battling here, uh, pretty much uh, reclaiming 50,000. I think the next time we breach above 50,000, we have a very good shot of approaching new all-time highs. Okay, This has been a slow shift. We have a macro bullish signal here. I would still be careful of potentially one big dump. Imagine the fake out we would see if we have this golden cross, we have a nice move. Let's say we get rejected at 50K again. Oh my gosh, that would be the biggest bear signal on the planet for the bears. Um, but that could also be the most ultimate bear trap before then heading to no all-time highs. And keep in mind, if we got rejected off 50K, it wouldn't matter as long as we were still remaining above the 21 week. That's, that's what's most important. Right now we're in bullish territory, okay? This was bullish, this was bearish, now we're bullish, okay? The trend right now is bullish and the trend back here was bearish, so keep that in mind. If you guys are new channel, make sure that like, subscribe, turn on these missies, absolutely time sensitive alerts. If you're interested in protecting your crypto or any kind of deals or bonuses, make sure to check out uh, the links below. And as well, if you do want to stick with our pool, growing extremely fast here, and uh, yeah, just within five days, already hitting some very unique milestones. It takes two to three minutes to learn how to do this. And uh, yeah, by staking with our pool, you're able to earn uh, rewards with our pool, just free ADA moving forward. But because the pool is new, it's only like five days old. It does take about 15, 20 ish days to really get up and up and moving and minting and everything like that. So it is a new pool and we're extremely grateful for everybody that's helped so far because the hardest is getting started. You know, once it's bigger and bigger, it kind of just snowballs. So uh, everybody that's delegated to us so far, it is very much appreciated. And without any further ado, that's it for me. Bye-bye.